How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy 123 here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to sideload Android apps in Windows 11 without using an emulator. We'll be using the Windows subsystem for Android, which is a relatively new feature in Windows 11, so it's still being worked on by Microsoft. You may encounter some issues or missing features, but during my testing, I was successfully able to install and run several different Android apps through APK files. I was also able to install a third-party app store because the Windows subsystem for Android does not support Google Play services. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. Alright, so to begin, we first need to make sure that our computer is compatible with the Windows subsystem for Android. So to check our computer specs, we're going to want to head over to the Windows settings. So go ahead and open up the start menu and then click on settings. Make sure you're on the system tab and then click on about. And listed here are the specs for my computer. On screen now, I'll put the minimum requirements for the Windows subsystem for Android. At minimum, you need at least 8GB of RAM installed on your computer. You also need an Intel i3 8th gen or AMD Ryzen 3000 series CPU, which you should have already since it's roughly the minimum required CPU to run Windows 11 itself. And the final and probably the most important requirement for the subsystem for Android is you need to have Windows 11 running on an SSD. If you're unsure if you have Windows 11 running on an SSD, we can check by heading back in the settings and going down to storage, advanced storage settings, then click on disks and volumes, and now locate the disk which has your C partition, and click on properties, and under media it shows whether you have an SSD or a hard drive. If this says SSD, you are good to go and meet the minimum requirements for the Windows subsystem for Android. Next, we need to make sure that we are running the latest updates for Windows 11. So in the Windows settings, just click on Windows Update, and then click Check for Updates. In my case, you can see that it's up to date, but if you do have a few updates to install, make sure you go ahead and install those before installing the Windows subsystem for Android. Now the very final thing we need to do before installing the subsystem for Android is we need to make sure that virtualization is enabled in our computer's BIOS. Now to check if it's enabled or not, we can just close out of the Windows settings, so I'm just going to open up the start menu here and I'm going to search for task manager. Uh, if you're running Windows 22 H1, your task manager might look a little bit different, but just click on the performance tab here. And at the bottom here, it's going to say virtualization. And in my case, it's enabled. So if virtualization is enabled, you are good to go and ready to install the Windows subsystem for Android. However, if virtualization says it's disabled, you need to restart your computer and head into your computer's BIOS and enable the virtualization setting there. I do have a tutorial on how to enable virtualization in your computer's BIOS. So if you need a little help, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, or you can click on the card in the top right of your screen. So now we're ready to install the Windows subsystem for Android. Begin by opening up the Microsoft Store. And once the Microsoft Store is opened, in the search bar, search for Amazon App Store. And there it is. So we need to install the Amazon App Store. And when we do so, the Windows subsystem for Android is going to be installed alongside it. So just go ahead and click on install. And once you click on install, you're going to be prompted that the Windows subsystem for Android is going to be downloaded and installed. Go ahead and click on download and the Windows subsystem for Android is going to take a few minutes to download and install. And once the Amazon App Store and subsystem for Android is done downloading and installing, uh, just click on open Amazon App Store. And uh, while the subsystem is getting ready, we can close out of the Microsoft Store. And now the Amazon App Store is going to open and you can choose to install Android apps through the Amazon App Store if you would like to. If you want to sign in to the Amazon App Store, just sign in with your Amazon account. However, the Amazon App Store is very limited. There's really not a lot here. There's a few games. Most of them I find are knockoffs or popular games on the Play Store. You can choose to just use the Amazon App Store if you would like to, but I think most of you are more interested in installing Android apps to the WSA through APK files or a third party app store, which I'll now show you how to do. So to install APK files to the Windows subsystem for Android, we're going to need to install a program called WSA Pac-Man. WSA Pac-Man allows us to simply double click on APK files to install them to the subsystem. So I'll leave a link in the description below to download and install WSA Pac-Man. Once you're on the GitHub page, 
come over here to releases and then look for the latest version of WSA Pac-Man then come down here to assets and click on WSA Pac-Man installer.exe. This will ask you where you want to save the installer for WSA Pac-Man. I'm going to save it on my desktop for easy access. And once WSA Pac-Man is downloaded, go ahead and open up the installer. Once the installer is open, just click on next, 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 and install. Once WSA Pac-Man is done installing, just click on finish to close out of the installer. We can now go ahead and download an APK file for the app we want to install to the Windows subsystem for Android. I'll leave two links in the description below to where you can download APK files for different Android apps. The first of which is APK Mirror and the second of which is APK Pure. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use APK Mirror to download Flappy Bird, a classic Android app. So I'm just going to search for it and hit enter. And here is the app, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and then click on download APK. And now it's going to ask me where I want to save the APK file on my computer. I'll just once again leave it on my desktop. Now we're going to want to minimize out of our browser. Go to the start menu and we're going to want to search Windows subsystem for Android settings. Once the settings for the subsystem for Android is opened, click on developer on the left side of the settings window and turn on developer mode. Now click on manage developer settings. After a few seconds, a settings window that looks similar to an Android phone or tablet will open. Uh, it's quite familiar and we just need to scroll down here and look for USB debugging and make sure that it's enabled. It should be enabled by default, but we just want to double check this. So now that we've confirmed that USB debugging is enabled, we can close out of the developer options and we can also close out of the Windows subsystem for Android settings. Uh, as a side note, you can delete the installer for WSA Pac-Man. And on the desktop here, I have the APK file for Flappy Bird, which I just downloaded. We can now double click on our APK file to install it. And WSA Pac-Man is going to open. It's going to ask you if you want to allow ABD debugging, click on allow. Sometimes when you allow ABD debugging, you need to click on cancel and double click on the APK file again. Otherwise, it won't let you install the app. And now you can see it's going to let us install Flappy Bird to the Windows subsystem for Android. You can see the app has successfully been installed. Go ahead and click on open up app. Uh, it does say that Flappy Bird was built for an older version of Android and it may not work properly, but I've tested it out and it does work fine. I believe the subsystem for Android is built off of Android 12. Uh, so Flappy Bird, I believe, is made for like Android 5. But uh, as I mentioned, it does work fine. And I'm just using the left click to tap on the screen. If you are using a laptop with a touchscreen, you can use the touchscreen to play your games or use the Android app. And that's pretty much the basics to sideloading Android APKs on the Windows subsystem for Android. So every time you install an app and you want to reopen it, you can simply uh, search for it in the search bar. So if I search for Flappy Bird, you can see it comes up here. Uh, additionally, you can open up the start menu, go to all apps. And under the F section, uh, you can see I have Flappy Bird installed. Another way that we can install apps to the Windows subsystem for Android is by downloading and installing a third-party app store. One third-party app store that I recommend is called Aptoid, and I'll leave a link to download it in the description below. So once you're on this page, find where it says install Aptoid app and click on download, and then download the APK to your computer. Once again, I'm going to download the APK for Aptoid to my desktop. And once it's downloaded, we can find the APK file on our desktop, double click on it, click on install. And now Aptoid is installed to the Windows subsystem for Android. So we can go ahead and open up the app. We can just click on skip. There's no need to sign into an account to download apps on Aptoid. Let's go ahead and search for an app to download. I'll just search for um, Geometry Dash. And we have Geometry Dash here. I'll just click on install. It's going to ask us to allow access to our phone storage so we can download and install this app. Click on OK. And then allow Aptoid to access photos, media, and files on our device. So a package installer window has come up. It's going to ask us to allow uh, the subsystem to install apps from unknown sources. So just click on settings and enable allow from this source to allow Aptoid to install apps. 
You'll then be prompted to install your app, so click on install. Uh, we can now close out of the install unknown apps window and uh, Geometry Dash is now done downloading, so we can just open it through Aptoid. And once again, we can actually just search for Geometry Dash in the start menu. Uh, we're going to want to give Geometry Dash some permissions. And there we go, we have the Android version of Geometry Dash running on our PC. Once again, we can go ahead and try it out. And that's pretty much all there is to it to sideloading Android apps on Windows 11 with the Windows subsystem for Android. If this tutorial helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next tutorial.